Hi, I'm Michael Ciamara, and here's what's happening inside Montgomery. As we enter the final days of the legislature, the state's education and general fund budgets, which are the most important work of the lawmakers, continue to move at a good pace. In the third week of April, the Alabama House passed next year's state operating and general fund by 101 to zero. The budget will spend $1.5 billion from the state general fund and about $1 billion more in federal stimulus money for a total of $2.5 billion. The general fund now goes to the Senate for consideration. Next, by a vote of 32 to 0, the Senate passed the Education Trust Fund for fiscal year 2010, which begins October 1st. With the addition of federal stimulus money, the total budget is $6.2 billion. The following day, the House Education Appropriations Committee passed out the education budget with a few small changes. For example, it would provide the same funding as last year for the Public Education Employees Health Insurance Plan, or PHEB, instead of the governor's recommended increase of $66 million. The education budget is the first item before the full House this week. When passed, it will go back to the Senate for their concurrence. If they do not agree to the House changes, the budget then goes to a conference committee made up of three House members and three senators to work out the differences and to come to an agreement. This seems to be a likely possibility this year. Representative Richard Lindsay, chair of the Education Appropriations Committee, says he would like the budget passed and on the governor's desk by April 30th. A couple of you have asked about what I think are good bills introduced this session that aren't getting the attention they deserve. Two such bills include legislation that would give tax relief to senior citizens who own property and a neighborhood revitalization bill. The broken windows theory simply states that if there is a building with a broken window that is never fixed or if a neighborhood just gets run down, that sends the message that no one cares. Vandals see that message and assume there will be no consequences for their activities, which leads to more vandalism, graffiti, and other criminal activity. Even if that does not happen, the neighborhood would lose considerable property value if not kept up. In either case, Senator Tripp Pittman of Baldwin County explains an innovative approach to neighborhood revitalization that he wants to see enacted. This is a way for the citizens to, uh, to contribute, to be assessed, if a neighborhood decided they want to be, to contribute some money to the neighborhood revitalization, either by itself uh, or in conjunction with some money from the city. What I did is I provided the incentive to be able to deduct a portion of that money, up to a total of $12,000 of an assessment, uh, at a maximum of $1,200 a year over 10 years. So the credits that the state would be given would be deferred on the out years and the benefits, of course, the money that was spent, the taxes, the sales taxes that are generated, the jobs that are generated, the economic activity is generated in the, in, the, in the present. In fact, the bill would sunset in a couple of years to try to stimulate the economy now. As you improve the, uh, the appearance of things, then it seems like that lifts up uh, the whole neighborhood. Another bill that really is worth passage is House Bill 535. It has 38 co-sponsors, but special interests do not want to see it moved out of committee. In 1978, the Alabama legislature created Act 48, an exemption on property taxes for seniors with a household income of $12,000 or less. That amount has never been adjusted for inflation. Representative Jack Williams of Hoover explains his legislation to give tax relief to senior homeowners. $12,000 in 1978 was a, it's a pretty nice pension. Uh, an equivalent amount today would be about $40,000. And that's what, what the Senior Citizens Tax Relief Act does. It brings uh, the exemption for property taxes up to uh, $40,000. In times like this, we need to uh, be putting money into the hands of our citizens, particularly our senior citizens on fixed incomes, and allowing them the opportunity to provide for themselves some of the basic necessities of life. Thank you for watching, and please keep sending in your great questions to the email address on your screen. You can find out more about what's happening in Montgomery at our website, alabamapolicy.org.